So if you've been following my channel a while, you know that I like to do photo walks and vlogs and Olympus tutorials, and then I'll sprinkle in a uh, product review here and there. Uh, but time to time, someone will ask me, how did I process that image? Because I really don't talk about that too much. And, and honestly, I'd say 80, 90% of the time, the image is straight out of camera. <laughs> Uh, but time to time, I do need to process them just to kind of give it that extra punch, right? And this image here, I converted from, this is the raw image that I took straight out of camera, and I process it to look like this. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. Uh, the first thing I need to do, or my methodology is one, is I always like to correct any lens corrections or distortions or anomalies that I can before I do any other kind of color or fisheye distortion. Uh, then number two, that's when I go into the um, adjusting the exposure and shadows and highlights, uh, things like that, and color maybe. And then my third step is usually just the detail and noise and any kind of uh, textures that I want to bring in and tones, but those are my three steps regardless of what software I'm using. Because when you're making changes uh, in color and tones and things, that's going to affect how the noise and other things look. So that's why I do that last. Now, let's go ahead and get started with the fisheye correction. And because I wasn't using the 8mm Fisheye Pro, I pretty much I'm stuck with using Lightroom. And this is the Pixco 8mm F3.8 Fisheye Lens. And this is a great little lens for $65. It's a lot of fun. And I did a review on this lens as well if you want to check it out. But uh, because this is not an Olympus lens, I could not correct this in Workspace. But Adobe has, or Lightroom has a really good uh, lens correction feature in it. And I'll just click this and I'll click this. And if I do manual, there's not enough in here to fix this. Because even if I put this to 100, you can see that it still looks a little bit off. It still has some fisheye distortion. So I have to pull that profile. And if I look down this list, you'll notice that Pixco is not in here, obviously, right? Uh, so what I like to do is pick another lens from either Rokinon or Samyang or Sigma because they make lenses for different cameras. So they'll have a better variety and I think, you know, I'll be able to find the lens that I need in Sigma. Uh, and all I have to do is look for an 8mm from Sigma. So I have it exactly here, an 8mm f3.5 circular fisheye. And you can see, just doing that corrected this instantly. And I, this is the same uh, lens profile that I use when I'm correcting the Olympus Pro lens in Lightroom. So if you have the 8mm Pro lens, uh, you can correct it, correct the raw files here as well with this same profile. But I'm not done yet because I have to do a little bit more because it's not a perfect correction. I have to correct it a little bit more manually. And after trial and error, I found that 110 was about right. So you can see, if I skew this in any direction, it kind of adds or subtracts from that lens profile. So I found that adding about 10 did correct this just the perfect amount. Uh, now, when you do lens corrections, Lightroom crops a lot of the image out because it has to. So I want to bring all of that back in. So all I have to do is use the scale under the transform box and I bring it in. Now I've brought the entire image circle of that lens back into the um, frame. And obviously, you know, there's all this white space now, but uh, this is what I want. And then what I do is once I have everything corrected and like I said you'll have to tweak it for whatever lens you have but I save this as you can see over here so I save it as a preset now next thing I want to do is uh, crop the image 
And the final image I cropped to a custom 16 by 7. So I'm going to go over here and crop it. And if you want to enter a custom, if you don't have 16 by 7, you can add anything you want in here. And that's what I did to create the 16 by 7. Now I want to center the image. And it's pretty close to being center. But what I'm going to do is bring the top down first and see if it's centered. And if you look closely, it's just a little bit off. So I'm going to move the house over just a little bit. That looks good. And then let me bring the bottom in and move the top. And I'm not going to mess with the sliders on the side because that'll throw things off center again. Because you'll see, you'll see now the house is not center anymore. So that's why I don't mess with those. I just use only the top and bottom. And let's see how far I can go before I get to the edges on the sides here. And that looks pretty good. Uh, and this is a simple rule of thirds composition, right? We have one third in the foreground, one third with the house, and one third all sky. Let me get some of this uh, out down here. So I'm going to move this up slightly. And let me check my center again. There, perfect. And I'll hit enter. So now I have my basic composition. And hopefully you can see this, but uh, let me expand this out a little bit. This house, because I didn't have my sensor completely parallel and square with the house, there's some skewed distortion. Uh, so I need to correct for that. So I'm going to go back down to transform. And first I'm going to do the horizontal because this right side of the house is, seems like it's facing a little bit further away than this side. So I'm going to bring that back in. Maybe a plus 5, plus 10. That's a bit too much. Right about there. And also the house looks like it's leaning back. And it may be in real life because it's an old house. But uh, it just feels like it's leaning back away from me a little bit. So I'm going to uh, do the vertical and bring that up right about 15. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. That's a bit too much. Maybe right there. That looks good. All right, so that's all of the fisheye distortion and perspective distortions, you know, through the vertical and horizontal. Now I'm going to level this. So let me uh, go into here. And I just eyeball it. It looks like it's tilting to the left a little, so I'm going to adjust it so it's tilting to the right. Let's look at that. Yeah, that's looking pretty straight on to me. All right, now the next big problem with this image is this giant mirror here and this little uh, PVC thing sticking out of the ground. And if you look in the mirror, you can see I didn't even stick my head out the window. I could have taken this shot with the window up, but what I should have done is stick my hand out a little further so that uh, this mirror didn't get in the image. But now I have to fix it. So let's, let's get the low hanging fruit first. So I'm gonna go to the uh, cloning brush and just adjust the brush size a tiny bit, right about like that, and click. Let me just move this up a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. And that's good. Now the mirror is the big one, right? Now fortunately, this mirror is pretty much parallel with all of the grass here. And I have a big grassy area that I can use to cover this. So I'm going to do that. 
So let me just expand my brush. And I'm going to put my crosshair right here along this line and, and just follow it the best I can. And then come up. And I'm only going to go up to the point of the grass line that I think this mirror is in. And then I'm just going to squiggle around in the middle a little bit. And then let's just pick some grassy area over here. There, that's good. Now all I have to do is fix this top part. This is a little bit trickier because it overlaps here a little bit. But let me shrink my brush just a little bit. And then let's grab from here. Just come in a little bit there. And I'm going to drag this piece down. See if we can find some darker areas over here. That's pretty good. Uh, I don't like that stump being in it there. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me feather maybe a little bit more. Okay. Good enough. Uh, you can play with that a lot more, but that's good enough. So I don't really see anything else I want to get out of this image. I think this looks pretty good the way it is. Uh, so next, uh, we do a black and white conversion, right? So we just click black and white. And then I like to scroll down and just click in the black and white panel, just click auto. And let Lightroom do most of the heavy lifting there. Now, the next thing I need to do is uh, bring the brightness of the sky down. So let me just uh, go back into highlights. Bring that all the way down. Let's, um, let's give this a strong contrast on the tone curve. And I want the sky to be darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eyedropper from this black and white panel. And these colors basically are, are just being affected in terms of brightness. So I'm going to click over here in the sky, right over in here, and just click and drag the mouse down a little bit in different parts. Right about there. And I don't want to do it so much because if I do it too much, then you'll start to see kind of a halo around the tree. So I want to do it just about like that. Maybe up a little bit. There, that looks good. Um, let me go back to the uh, exposure. Try and bring the whites down. Yeah, that helps. Now the house is a little bit dark. Let me see if I can bring that up with the black and white tones. Yeah, not bad. Right about there is good. All right, and I think that's it there. Now let me add some vignette. So I'm going to go to post crop vignette here and I'll just go somewhere down about halfway. I'm going to move the midpoint all the way to zero and then I'm going to feather this up to 100. And you can see that's a little bit too much, but that's okay because I can bring this in a little more, bring, make this very, very dark. And then what I'm going to do is just increase the exposure a little bit. I really want the house to stand out more. So by increasing the exposure, oops, that's about as bright as I want the house. So let me decrease the vignette. And you just have to go back and forth. I think right about there is good. House is now a little bit too bright. 
Let me darken this house a little bit. There, that looks good. All right. Uh, so that was stage two, mainly dealing with the the exposure and the tones. Um, I'm going to do a little dodge and burning with my adjustment brush here. Because what I want to do is uh, add a little more dramatic stuff to it. So I'm going to reset by double clicking on effects. And let me crank up the highlights and whites. And what I'm going to do is try and bring this tree in a little bit more. And this tree in a little bit. And maybe over in here some of this grass. Like so. And this part where I blended, well, let me let me get a new brush. What I want to do is darken this a little bit because this is standing out a little bit too much. So reset this, bring the shadows down. Yeah, that's better. It's a little bit too dark, but that's good, right about there. And there's a little bit of haze here, so I'm going to do another brush and the haze. Just do 100. There, that's good. And let me do one more thing. Let me bring back some of the details in this tree right in here, the shadows. Maybe this tree a little bit here. Yeah, bring a light streak here. Make a light streak here. And spread it out a little bit. All right, good. I'm pretty happy with that image. Um, not quite. Let me... Let me make another brush. I need to feather this brush a little bit more. Let's darken this area right in here. Okay, good enough. Um, now, now we're at the end of stage two where I deal with lighting and exposure. So now I'm gonna deal with noise and detail. So let me punch in and look at this. And, you know, with these gritty images, you don't have to be too precise. Let me just uh, crank up the haze and texture, like so. We're getting there, maybe too much texture there. A little less de haze. Okay, that looks good. And there's not much noise in this image but I will try and do a little additional sharpening. So I'm gonna just gonna crank the sharpening up to 100, and then I'm gonna do this masking. Now, if I click on the mask uh, slider and hold the Alt key at the same time, I can mask out the areas I don't want sharpened, and that's everything in black in this case. I just want primarily the house. So it looks like I can go all the way to 100. All right, and Last but not least, I mean, this image is good as is, but I like to do split toning. <clears throat> and you can see that we can give the highlights a certain tint and the shadows a different tint. And I like to do just standard cinematic colors, teal and orange. So I'm gonna pick teal right about here. And I'm gonna pick orange right about here. And then I'm just gonna bump those two up just a tiny bit like so. Now, being a real estate photographer, this is not the image I would deliver to a client, right? So what would I do um, to make this image look good? Well, 
I'll show you very quickly. I'm going to reset this image. I'm going to do my lens correction that I saved. I'm going to crop this into a standard 4x3 and do the same things with centering. And we'll do a rule of thirds. And I want as little of this grass in the image as possible because that's ugly. So in this case, I'm going to crop rule of thirds, sky, and then the two thirds will be the house and a little bit of grass. And then go down here to my transform. Bring it up a little bit. Horizontal. There. Okay, and then level it. Let's see. Eyeball this. Looks like I'm doing negative 40 this time. Actually, it just looks good like that. It's still a little bit off. All right, and I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Give it a nice glow. And I'm just going to click Auto because this is a color image. Let Lightroom do the work. Maybe I'll bring the highlights in a little more. And we're almost there. Let me bring the skies a little bit darker. Same idea. Just using the eyedropper to bring these, these colors down. Whoops, that's hue. <laughs> I want to do luminance. There. That looks good. Brighten the house up a little bit. And then I want less detail, so I might bring the texture back a little bit. Clarity. Let me punch in while I'm doing that. Let me correct the softness over here. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now let's work on the detail a little bit. Mess this out. Add a touch of noise reduction, touch of color reduction. I just do that out of habit. And then one last thing is the colors are a little bit too rich. I think the auto. There, let's bring that back a little bit. A little less saturation. All right, and this is probably what I would deliver to the client for the house like this and just say, you know, sell it as a you know, fixer upper, just needs a little TLC, you know, and, and then pump up the aspects that it's, you know, in a private community with access to docks and a fishing pier and playgrounds and has a wonderful community that uh, your family can come to for summer vacations, uh, what have you. So this is not a typical video that I do, I, you know, but if you do see an image that I processed and you want me to show you how I did it, I'll be happy to make another video like this. So thanks again for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.